Oh my god, what are Rick and Ryan up to now? It's time for the Slightly Warped Podcast. What up, what up? <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. Completely Hi, warped. That's big show. Yes, we are. <laughs> so, how was your weekend, man? Uh, weekend was pretty good. Just kind of chillaxed. I, I didn't do you. nothing special. Uh, Neither did I. So. Um. I don't know what y'all's weather's looking like, but it's been cold and rainy the last couple of days. It's like, um, hey, um, what happened to 72 and sunny? I need that. Right. Uh, it's been cooler. It was cold over the weekend. It's warming up today. It's like 64, 65 out there right now. Still windy. Um, it was warm enough Sunday for me to cut the grass. Saturday was too cold. So when I did some yard work on Sunday... I hear you. I'm ready to do some grilling this season. Yeah, that's what I need to do. But what I need to do first is I want a new grill to justify my actions for the summer. Charcoal or propane? I prefer charcoal. I really do. Um, it. I, I just there's just something about the taste uh, of a propane grill food. I uh, I prefer charcoal. You just haven't had the right person prepare it for you, I guess. Challenge accepted. <laughs> All right. I'll take you up on that challenge. <laughs> I do so, a little bit of both. I have I have an electric smoker. I have a, a, a pellet smoker. I have an actual charcoal smoker. And I have a propane grill. So I do a little bit of everything. So tell me about the pellets. Mm -hmm. Um what do you, do you prefer that over charcoal? Uh, I don't really have a preference. It depends what I'm cooking, what I'm smoking. Something small, I use a smaller charcoal, but like a brisket or something, I'll throw that in my pellet grill or my pellet smoker. Um, is the is the burn better with a pellet? Um, yeah, as long as you monitor it and watch it. Uh, my electric smoker, man, that's, that's a set it and forget it type of thing. I mean, that's, that's really nice yeah. and it comes out very tasty. I mean, it's, I got a pretty good big one. It's like a refrigerator. It's pretty, pretty good size. I'm, I'm a lifelong charcoal guy, so I probably wouldn't know what to do if I got a pellet grill. I mean, I would man, have to do, I'd be charcoal, my ass off. Charcoal grills are nice. Don't get me wrong. Um, but they're not like the end-all, be-all. That's why yeah. they make other ones. You know, charcoal grill takes a lot of work and effort and time, and you have to deal with the heat versus dealing with the food. So I'd rather deal with the food than the heat. You do have a point there. Ladies and gentlemen, where else can you go for some good grilling advice except for the Two Dudes podcast? That's right. I'm sorry, the Slightly Warped podcast. Damn, I went back <laughs> over two years. Formally, the Two Dudes the, podcast. Yeah. There's still two dudes on it. <laughs> True that. <Check> out. <laughs> <laughs> so um nowadays you can't be too sure. Wow. Ain't that the <laughs> truth? So, you know, we talked a couple weeks ago. I think we brushed on the topic of the uh Bud Light can and all that. And yeah. uh, one of my friends at work, uh, he he does work on the Miss Kansas pageant. And I guess this year they've opened it up. There is going to be a trans contestant in the pageant. Now, okay, him and I are on the same mind. I mean, it doesn't matter to us, so to each their own. But what do you think would happen if that person won Miss Kansas? Is it the? Is it their? Oh, okay. So it's not its own category. It's just she's able to compete in yes. the in the pageant. Oh, I'm sure it'll ruffle somebody's feathers. 
here's the thing. It's it's one of those things you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. If she loses, people are like, oh, you just didn't want a trans contestant in there. The other side, if she wins. Oh, you're, how, play, you just, you're just placating to that crowd. Yeah. So Man, it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't. This might be my old Gen Z or, or Gen X. What are we, Gen X? X, uh, yeah. You know, my old Gen X mind talking, but <clears throat> I'm really tired of hearing about it, honestly. I'm tired of being run down my throat. You know, the he, she, it, her pronouns or whatever. I mean... Now, wouldn't it, now, see now? I'm getting ready to so rant. When, Go ahead. When when you when you take a bull, and when a farmer has a bull, and he decides to clip that bull, it doesn't become a cow; it becomes a steer. Still a male. I don't understand why this this whole uh, country is the way it is. But ran away. Go ahead, sir. All right. If you're a man, you're a man. If you're a woman, you're a woman. If you're a man who wants to be a woman, so be it. That's you. If you're a woman who wants to be a man, so be it. That's you. But there's only two types, men and women. Period. There are no it's. There are no them, they. They is a group of people as, as far as I'm concerned. If you, if you identify as male or female, that's on you. I'm going to call you a man if you feel like you're a man. I'm going to call you a woman if you feel like you're a woman. I'll I'll call you whichever one you want, regardless of how you were born. I, I can get with that. But I'm not going to create a third alternate. Alternates are made for sports teams, okay? Period. And jury selection. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> So no need to ask me how I know about that. Just move right along. Just keep it pushing. And, and and I know that there's some people that are out there. Well, what if I don't identify as either? I'm going with that which you were born. There is no other, though. That's the thing. There yeah. is no other. There there yeah. isn't. There just isn't. You, you may You're be a man and you may not feel like a or man. Female. If you've you got the female, equipment, <clears throat> you might be a female that dresses like a man. And you might be a man that dresses like a female, yep. but you're still what God created you to be. Yep. And to each their own. I'm not saying that it's wrong. I just tired of hearing it. Absolutely. To each their own. Be what you want to be. And being forced to acknowledge that where, you know, it's just not my belief system. You know, yeah, anybody who's not, like, I don't fit into a category. Yes, you do. You may yes, not you feel like it, but you're in a category. That's just the way it is. Look at I me. See no I'm a black <clears throat> man. I don't care. I can bleach my skin until the bleach runs out. I'm still a black man. I'm, I'm a man. If, if I identified as anything else, if I felt like I was a woman, then I would say, call me <clears throat> she. Don't call me they. It's only one of me. So I think I'm the, one or the other. I think the I think the you the they part is if they want to switch back and forth between female and male. You come to work in a dress, you she. <laughs> you come to work in pants, we you know, I I I, I listen. Look, whatever I day it cool. is, that's that's what I'm gonna call you based on whatever you want that day. But I'm not gonna see, pick a third alternate. I seen a cool video. And it was just it was just trying to make this particular transgender uh, understand this guy's philosophy, and it was a male as a female. So trans, I don't know. Do you call that transgender female or transgender male? Yeah. When there are a male dressed as a female. So anyway, this is a male uh, identifying as a female and talking to a doctor. How he was trying to explain that that type of thing is a possible mental illness. And hmm. she was like, she was like, well, you know, and I'm being respectful, even though it was a guy. She said that, you know, what he's his thinking is wrong and in in inclusive. Um, 
and some other things. He and he basically just asked her question. He said, "You're an EMT, right?" And she said, "Yes." And he goes, "You believe that there's just not male and female. There's other genders." She said, "Yes." He said, "Okay, you're an EMT. You get called out on a uh, call, and it is a male who identifies as a female, and she tells you." That and he actually has the male parts, and she tells you that he is having a possible miscarriage. Would you actually entertain that? And she was like, No, it's like that's my point. What's wow. up, Mo? I'm trying to figure out what I walked in on. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, this is the slightly warped podcast, you're liable to walk in on anything any particular day. I see. <laughs> we're we're talking about all this change gender stuff being run down everybody's throat in this nowadays and our old gen x vibes going out we're ranting we're old men <laughs> pretty it's much okay. Man. so well, we're joined by Glad monique waters uh nice to meet you you as well so you know ryan huh i do very yeah, well yeah my condolences um so I understand that uh, you are a masseuse, massage therapist. Okay, there is got... there is a difference. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> There's a huge difference. Yes. First, first of all, let me. Uh, I would always like to say that Monique, she has one of the best grinds and hustles that I've ever seen. Uh, very independent, uh, uh, very forward thinking in the field which is why I want her to be on here. Uh, she has been my massage therapist for a couple of years now mm -hmm. and has done wonderful work. And I wanted to give her the opportunity to plug her business, kind of tell her, tell us about herself, how she got into the business, you know, and some pros and cons for it and whatever else she wants to. So go ahead, Miss Mo. Well, uh, so yeah, like Ryan said, I'm Monique. I own Massage Money and Spa. We are in downtown Overland Park, about a block west of 79th and Metcalf. Um, we have a couple of different therapists. We do waxing. We do customizable massage. We include hot stones and warm towels in every session. Um, and then we are currently in the process of building the only private contrast therapy room in the city. So contrast therapy is using hot and cold therapy um, through you know, sauna, water, whatever you want to use. Um, so we are installing an infrared sauna, a cold plunge tub, as well as a steam shower and rent light therapy lights. So you guys can rent that as couples or alone and go in and just do your own thing. Um, so yeah, like Ryan said, always forward thinking. That's one of the new things that we came up with. Like you, you got to keep moving and shaking and figuring out how you're going to stay relevant. So that's kind of what I'm good at. I'm an ideas person. Um, nice. The way that we got here, um, I actually used to be a chemist. Um, so I used to cut and compare human tissue in the beginning. And then I was a raw materials coordinator. So I used to work in animal pharmaceuticals. So we did antibiotic pellets um, and medicine for cattle, swine, and poultry. So this was a total 180 for me um, because it just resonated with me. I wanted something that was more about health and wellness. I was a personal trainer. I was a figure competitor. I was eating healthy. I just didn't want to be in the pharmaceutical realm. Um, so I switched over, started my business. I was a solo practice for multiple years because I just thought employees would stress me out and I didn't want anything to do with them. But also... Um, I'm a person with big ideas, so it was just my destiny to grow. So I eventually got a larger space. Um, I started out renting the rooms to people, and then I started using contractors to go out and do business for me. And then I decided to just go full on and hire employees. Um, so now here we are, and we're awesome. We're booked and busy, and especially after a pandemic in a touch industry, you know, that's... Um, uh, that's that's bragging rights <laughs> because we thought our businesses were going to fold um, when the pandemic happened and we came back making four times as much money in less than two years later. So nice. um, that's, that's about what we do. And you hey, wasn't so, shut down very long during the pandemic. What did you say? I said, and you weren't shut down very long. Like no, we you did, you... maybe two or three months. Yeah. And then we got right back into it. So, so let me ask you, since we're talking about the pandemic, what were some of the challenges 
during that hiatus and how, how did you take that on in order to make that comeback? I think for most people, it was just the fear of how am I going to pay the bills? I still have to make money. Um, and for me personally, it was different because I had always worked a lot. So I saw it as an opportunity to rest. You know what I mean? I, I sat down and I worked on some behind the scenes stuff. Um, and then on top of that, my business has always been in good standing as an so I knew I was going to be able to get the PPP loans and the business loans. And that's why it's so important to have all your financials and your accounting in order, because there was a lot of people that could not take advantage of that thing. I'm sorry, of those um, options, just because their business wasn't in good standing. Um, so for us, it was just a matter of always handling the business as a business and not a side hustle. So we were able to make it through that time with no issues financially. Now, Going back to uh, uh, probably a little bit further, when did you realize that the business was going to be as successful as it was? Um, I'd say probably like the first year and a half. Um, I was pounding the pavement. I was volunteering at any organization that I could. I was showing up at events to do chair massage. I was inviting people to my house to let me work on them so I could get as much hands-on experience as possible. And then I was asking for realistic feedback because I didn't want to be out here sucking. And people were just like, oh, you're great. So, you know, I made it very important to them that I'm trying to quit my job to do this. Like, I need to really know, um, you know, am I doing a good job? So when I started to get regular bookings and, you know, people were coming monthly, people were coming every other week. That was when it clicked to me that I can actually make this work. I am so glad that you mentioned that because, you know, it's easy for us to say somebody has hustled, but to give those examples, because there are so many people that say, hey, I do this, I do that. I have a business doing this, but I don't ever see the hustle. I don't see I them doing the thing. And, yeah. you know, that's a good example for people that are listening or watching. That's how you hustle. You put yourself out there. Yeah. And that's really good. And the thing about Mo is when she's hustling, she doesn't tell you that she's hustling. She's going to tell you after the hustle is complete, <laughs> this is what I've been doing. You don't know what she's doing in the background. You yeah. know, she, she's just not sitting there looking pretty. She's up there. She's doing it. She's, she's in the dirt. She's working. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think a lot of people see businesses, um, especially like ours, and they recognize what, you know, we make per hour per client. And they're just like, oh, I'm going to get into that business. It's easy. And I'm like, I don't just sit around and massage people all day. Like there is a whole background. There's a whole back office that I'm running. You know what I mean? Everything from credit card processing might go bad. What happens if the systems go down? I have to handle uh, employees when they have an issue. I have to handle clients when they have an issue. I have scheduling. I'm sending contracts out for corporate. I'm setting us up for events. I'm trying to advertise and promote. Like, I don't think people really recognize how much work you do to keep something like that afloat. What's the craziest challenge you've had with a client? Um, well, in our business, you know, that, that's keep me out of it. Keep me out of it. Fast <laughs> therapist. Hey, before um, we go any further, you you didn't do anything with Deshaun Watson when the Browns were in town, did you? No. <laughs> okay, I'm okay. We're just checking. Just checking. That but yeah, it's, it's sex. It's people viewing you as hookers, um, you know, and it's, it's hard from the city as well because we're licensed in Overland Park. So even on the applications, when we go to renew, they ask, have you ever been in the sex industry? Have you ever been an escort? Have you ever owned any of these businesses? If so, were your licenses ever revoked? Um, because they know this is a big deal. And it's like, you know, they're looking for sex trafficking, which is something that's important. So I get it. But at times it's something somewhat offensive how they come at us as if we're hookers but yeah you have clients who call all the time asking for specials and is it really full body and what all do you do so it's, it's a pretty regular thing and you just have to learn how to handle it now is there anything that you would do differently today if you were just starting the business up um, I would have taken on employees much, much sooner, um, not even just for the financial reason, which financially, yeah, it's amazing how much growth you can have by adding one to two people, um, but just to have more free time, just to not be doing everything myself. Like I would have started hiring people sooner. I would have hired business coaches sooner, um, you know, to teach me how to scale up and do those things as opposed to waiting so long because I felt I was going to be overwhelmed by it. 
Okay. Now, um, to the people listening out there, you know, regardless of what industry they want to start up or get into, what's the one piece of advice you would give anyone if they came up to you and said, hey, I like what you did. I want to start my own business. What would you recommend to them? What would you say to them? Hire business coaches and be willing to pay damn good money for them. Um, a lot of people want to do everything themselves, not realizing like, okay, if you want to step up and do all your marketing, but you have no marketing background, it might take you weeks to put a, you know, a campaign together. Whereas had you just hired a marketing person who knew how to do this, they would have been doing some testing for you overnight. Um, so you lose just as much money by attempting to do everything yourself. So the biggest change in my business was hiring an actual business coach. And I didn't take someone cheap. I got a seven figure and I was paying him five figures a month to tell me what to do. Um, and, you know, like I said, it saved me a lot of money. It made me a lot of money. So my advice is be willing to invest in yourself and truly be educated on the business side of a business. Because a lot of people know how to engage in their craft, but they suck at business. You need to know the business side if you're going to have longevity and make this work and actually sustain yourself. I'm going I'm to need y'all to branch out soon because I was telling Big Show at the beginning of the show, I pinched a nerve in my back last weekend uh, <laughs> helping do some stuff around the house. So it's like, ah, where was you a week ago? You know, but. <laughs> we can so handle what, it. What all kind of massage? I know you do like lymphatic um, <laughs> and things like that. So just kind of explain some of that stuff that you do because, you know, most people think, well, okay, I'm going to come in, lay on my stomach, you're going to rub on my back, we're going to be good. But you actually have uh, skills that a lot of uh, massage therapists do not have. Yeah, so we have additional certifications. So um, the main one is manual lymphatic drainage. So you probably mostly hear about it with girls getting BBLs and they need post-op care. Um, so that's one way to use lymphatic massage. But we also treat people who, you know, have had a cancer and they've had lymph nodes removed from their breast area. Um, we also deal with people who have lymphedema or lipedema. So it's for true medical conditions, but it's basically a skin stretching technique um, that's meant to help move fluid when people have fluid retention due to certain medical conditions. Um, so people may have inflammation or swelling from a surgery. This is to kind of help that move along quicker um, so that they heal faster. Um, the other thing that we do is customizable massage. So instead of having somebody come in and be like, oh, do you want Swedish, deep tissue, uh, sports, and giving you 18 different options and you don't even know the difference, we just say, hey, you're paying one price for the time. Um, talk to us about what we need to do. And then that's what we're going to work out for you. So we customize every session. So we have a conversation with you when you first come in to kind of figure out what you need. And if that changes somewhere throughout the plan, then you just tell me and we can adjust as we need to do. But yeah, that's kind of, um, it's the way we treat our business. We try to give people what they want versus what we just think they need. Hmm. Now you had mentioned Swedish and deep tissue. I thought that was the same thing. So real quick, yeah. what's the difference? <laughs> um, Swedish is more of a relaxation, so just really light massage, whereas deep tissue, we're looking to work something out. So somebody might, you know, have worked out today and they have some pain. So we're going to use methods to kind of dig in as opposed to just trying to put somebody to sleep. Okay. And, sh and she's good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we don't go in there a little tired. <laughs> You'll be asleep. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> hey, before we go any further, because I don't want to forget, let everybody at home know how they can get in touch with y'all, schedule an appointment with you, and, and, you know, again, give us the address. I know you gave that at the top of the interview, but I want to give it again so that uh, everybody knows. Okay, so our address is 7313 West 79th Street. Overland Park, Kansas, 66204. So we are right in the heart of downtown Overland Park by the farmer's market. Um, you can look us up on social media, mostly Facebook. Um, just look up Massage Amani and Spa, and Amani is A-M-A-N-I. Um, other thing, you can Google us. So our website is massageamaniandspa.com. Um, and if you go there, we have a book now, um, I'm sorry, a book now menu. And you can just click that and it'll take you directly to our booking site. So all of our booking is done online. You can prepay so that when you come in, we can just get to work. We don't have to talk and waste time and worry about all the other stuff. 
Oh, and to call or text us, um, 913-374-7361. And like I said, you can text that number as well. And then as soon as one of us is free, we will go ahead and get back in touch with you. All right. And and for also for people at home that might be interested, what, what are the rates? Just on um, average. So one hour is one hundred dollars. Um, Ninety minutes, one thirty-five. Two hours is one ninety-five, and we go all the way up to two and a half hour sessions for two fifty-five. So our two and a half hour sessions are a big seller, and it's just because it's this this big um, you know massage that shows you various modalities. So it's enough time for us to just do anything and everything, and give you an idea of what we do in totality. So um, people love that one, and then. Other thing that we do that I didn't mention is we do corporate events and spa parties. So if, you know, your wife and your girlfriends are getting together, we can send out contractors. Um, we also are always looking for big corporate partners. So if you work somewhere that has a wellness program or even if they don't, um, you can reach out to us. And if you can get us in with HR or whoever we need to talk to, we will give you um, a discounted rate on massage if you can get us in the building with your employers because we're always looking for corporate people. I'm going to see if y'all can get down there uh, next time I have a, a run down in the Kansas City area. Because when I come across that finish line, I, I want to be on somebody's table. Let them rub all the kinks out, yeah. especially them long runs. A oh, six-mile yeah. run. I, you're right, Ryan. I'll be ready to pass out. Mm -hmm. I'd say she she helps Susie uh, with her marathons, get ready for her marathon. So she's, yeah, the, it's good for running. And I will say as a client, that 90 minutes is perfect. I tried that two hour massage and it took me three days to wake up. So you, you, <laughs> that 90 minute one is almost damn near perfect. Yeah, an hour is just too fast. Like I think a lot of people um, are just like, oh, I don't want to spend that much and this and that. And then when you get to the hour, they're like, what, you're done already? So yeah, an hour is enough to skim the surface, but it's just not 90 or more is what you want to do. And I'll say this too with the prices, and some people might go, "Oh my God, that's a lot of money." Self care is, is important, you know, and and one hundred and thirty five dollars for ninety minutes is not a bad price. Yeah, and most people are coming in, like I said, once a month. So I always tell people, just look at what you're spending on. People go and spend ten bucks a day on coffee. I'm like, by the end of the month, you're gonna spend more on coffee than you did on the massage, and the massage would have been a lot healthier for your mind and your body. Um, so you just have to figure out what you value the most, you know. And people who come, they do come consistently because it's like a shower; you can't just do it once and everything is gone. Or working out, you know, it's something you do consistently to take care of yourself, and that's important. So consistently and it does make a difference. Mm -hmm. Would you say, would you say a massage should be done weekly, monthly? I mean, define Depends. consistently. We say minimum of once a month because that's enough time for mm -hmm. everything to just go back to what it is. Um, if you have someone who, you know, is an athlete who is consistently working out, we may want to see you once every other week. Um, so mm -hmm. it's really just, but your budget can afford, but you want to do it at least monthly. Speaking of athletes, do you do any high profile athletes? Let me tell you this. So one of my Cause, therapists. Because if, uh, if Mahomes shows up, you know, I don't root for that team, but I want that autograph. So, you know. Okay, so we can't legally say names of anybody they work with, but one of my therapists does work with very high profile athletes. Um, I choose not to. I've never been a fan of athletes. And partially just because I'm a woman, I don't want any of the Deshaun Watson stuff. Um, but two, I enjoy working on regular people because they respect your grind, your hustle, and they understand and feel that they need you and they tend to respect your schedule whereas if you're a professional athlete you don't know where you're gonna be you might have to run around here or stop or expect me to come to your house and like we're too busy in-house to be able to do all that so personally i do not prefer to do professional athletes all right but we in-house who do <laughs> so real quick before we head out need need some funny stories massage chronicles Give, give give us a couple. This is this is this is the the warped podcast. So, you know, I, I need some funny massage. You notice how he took the word slightly out of it. He's, he's no, we are completely on. warped, brother. We are warped. <laughs> 
have um my clients like to you know give us gifts they like to bring us food all sorts of stuff so I had a lady who was one of my first clients of the day and she came in on a Wednesday and I love cupcakes to death she had these cupcakes in the bag I immediately run up front I'm like oh yeah I'm gonna have this cupcake I eat it and then as I'm like three-fourths of the way into it I taste the marijuana and I was like oh hey she didn't give me a real cupcake she just gave me an edible so I walked in the room and I said what is this and she looked at me and kind of smiled and I said what the hell is <laughs> and she was like, okay, it's an edible. And she was like, did you eat it already? And I'm like, yeah. And I got like seven clients today. That was the hardest massage day of my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> that high. Um, and trying to work all day. But you know what? It worked. Everybody was happy. I got zero complaints. So I'm like, it helped. It did its job. But yeah, it was a fun day. That's awesome. All right. Now Bring me food. I ask if there's drugs in it. Lesson learned. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Hey, we appreciate it. We appreciate you educating us, uh, especially me. Um, I learned a lot, especially from a business standpoint. And I, I really, I really think that there's a lot of people out there that are listening to this that have also learned a lot. Monique Waters, massage yes. also therapist. Say, yes. I'll also say just to give her a little bit more kudos, just from an outsider looking in, she has no fear. Yeah. <laughs> and and any fear that she does have, she's never going to show. Like she'd be like the perfect samurai warrior. She has <laughs> absolute no fear. If I was in a foxhole, or if I needed somebody to have my back, Mo would be one of the first people I call. <laughs> She, you don't she's that type of person. Do all the things. That's, that's my motto. Do all the things. Yes. Well, that's cool. Well, we appreciate yeah. you coming on. Yeah. Really nice yep. having you. This is great. Well, yeah. Well, thank you again, sir. If you ever need somebody back, I do business mentoring too. So <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's great. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. See you in a couple weeks. All right, sir. Y'all have a good night. All right. All right. Bye bye. All right. Again, that was Monique Waters. Uh, good one, show. Very good one. Um, learned a lot. Excellent. See, we need I'm more guests you, on this show. Yeah, she's she's a hustler, man. And she, the, the one thing that I really like and admire about her is like when she said, don't be afraid to like hire somebody that knows that field, you know, mm -hmm. she, she has learned and she's actually a good uh what sort of sponsor too like if you have like she said she does business leading classes and things like that she has come a long way from when i first met her i mean she is she's the bomb.com nice so if you're in that area please book with her tell them slightly warp sent you she might give you a discount she, might, she not, might not but you can but still say she's that, a business uh, woman yeah <laughs> And you're right. Um, too many times we're afraid to uh, spend money in order to make money. You got to invest in yourself if you're going to make it work. She's the type of person, and this is what I love about her. I mean, she's not married. She doesn't have any kids. Uh, she's very uh, private on her personal life. But what I like about her is like she'll just one day call her friends and go, Let's go on a trip. And they'll be like, okay, great. You know, if you and I say that, we're probably going to, what, drive to Texas or something? They're flying to, like, Bali or some shit like that. I mean, they're going <laughs> – when they take a trip, they take a trip, okay? <laughs> and hey. she does it a lot. So, I mean, she's that type of person, and, and I admire a lot. There's a lot about her I admire. She reminds me of my older sister, very strong-willed women. So that's probably good. why I like her so much. Now, I want to backtrack. Because before Monique came on, we were talking about the whole transgender thing. And yes. I don't know if there's anybody in our audience who is part of the trans community. If they are, we would very much like you to come on the show one day. And, uh, you know, if we're wrong about something that we've said, or you feel differently, or you want to educate us, we're all for that. Um, because when you're on the outside looking in, it is, it's harder to see some points as opposed to others. So we'd like to hear from you. 
So contact the contact us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. We'd definitely love to have you on, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind that just a little bit. We're not wrong because we're just voicing our opinions. We didn't say that That's... it is wrong or that it is right. We're just voicing our opinions about it. So we're not wrong about our opinion. Yeah, I'm more or less looking at the they them kind of thing because to me, there's I can't see that. I still not wrong. It's your opinion. That's true. You know, you heard it yourself, folks. Show just said I'm not wrong. It's my opinion. It's so right. There. there you go. And if we have offended you, we do apologize. No offense taken. We're just throwing stuff off our head. We didn't and anybody who wrong. anybody who listens or watches this show, they know that we ain't trying to offend nobody, but we do like to have fun. Yes, sir. Okay, real quick, we only got a few minutes here. Mm -hmm. Mandalorian, scale of one to ten, season three. I give it eight. Seven and a half, I, eight. I'm gonna go seven and a half because it it wasn't it it wasn't as good as season one or two. I'll grant you that. Season two is the best. Um and I would give season two a nine. So this has got to be a seven and a half. Yeah, I there, do was, there was like too much, too much started, of a lull in it. Yeah, I, I do like how they started to lay the foundation mm -hmm. for upcoming series. You know, uh, I think the last two episodes mentioned uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn quite a bit. Um, Who we will see in Ahsoka in August. I will say this, and if there's any spoilers out here, if you haven't seen it, this is where you want to go and cut us off, but... I was a little disappointed how they killed Gideon off so fast, you know. Or was it a clone? True. I mean, that's it's very possible that it could have been, um, but you know, I that whole see uh, episode seven, episode eight, I was like, this is really just annoying because like the Mandalorians got their planet back too fast. It was like the fight was just. Done and over. I, I didn't like that part, but for the most part, it was pretty decent. Yeah, yeah, and just like any show, it's not without its flaws. But uh, I think they they wrapped it up pretty good. They wrapped that plot line up so that season they four, tidied it up. Yeah, season four, we're back to bounty hunting. So I do like I do like how they did the uh, the uh, uh, feedback uh, when Grogu was in the Jedi temple when Anakin was going in to slay all the young younglings. Yeah. I did like that flashback. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, but real quick, cause I know we got less than a minute left mm -hmm. joke of the week. I'm going to stick it to the star Wars theme. What is the internal temperature of a Tauntaun? I do not know. Luke warm. Uh, again, I should have saw that coming. Take us out of your show. God bless y'all. Thank you for uh, watching us. Uh, Mo, again, thank you. Appreciate you coming on. And uh, man, we'll see you next week. Stay, Take care of that stay blessed, everybody. I will. See ya. Love each other.